Hello. I'm a little bit late. I was having an issue with my camera, but we got it fixed. So I apologize if you're like waiting, you're like refreshing, what is happening? I'm here now. All right, how is everyone today? Where are you watching from? How are your socks going? Just got myself a fresh cup of coffee and we are ready to go. It's hot, hot, hot here today. Good morning, Emily and Alexa and Stacy. How are you? Hey, Olivia. How's it going today, everyone? How are your socks? How's your weather? <laughs> I am not quite to where I wanted to be. I was gonna get the foot done on these socks and I'm about 20 rounds short. So we're gonna knit for a little while. I mean, I don't think I'm gonna get those 20 rounds in before the toe, but I can do a few more and then we can do the toe and then later I'll go back <laughs> and put the toe where it needs to be. Truth be told, I could have finished this this morning, but I got a little into Instagram and I was like, just cuddling with Toaster, playing around on Instagram, made a reel. I was having a good time. So, uh, you know, sometimes that just happens and it's okay. It's okay. It's Friday, everyone. Woohoo! Happy Friday. Good morning. Hot and rainy. Oof. It is just hot here. Very, very hot. I've got my air conditioning off now, but today when I'm zooming, it's going to have to be on because it's like hot to the point of being uncomfortable. <laughs> and I would like to be a little more comfortable. Um, good morning from New Hampshire. It's hot. Yes. Um, good morning from Minnesota. One sock finished, one halfway done. Amazing, Rebecca. I might be able to get a third sock done. I finished my two yesterday. That's awesome. Good morning, Megan. Taking half a day off work and will be snuggling a puppy in my AC this morning or this afternoon. Oh, perfect, perfect. Um, good morning. Hope you got my email yesterday. Weather here in Missouri is cool and rainy. I did get your email. I'm going to get you your prize. Oops, I just dropped a stitch. Hold on, let's fix that. Oh, would you like to see? Hey, why not? We're here together. Let me show you how I fix this drop stitch that I just saw. And then we'll go back to knitting and chatting for a minute because I gotta, I gotta get a little more done. So, bam, here we go. I've got a dropped stitch. This happens to me often. Drop stitch right there. So it's really sunny today, which makes it almost a little harder to record because <laughs> we don't have blackout curtains. So let me knit over to this drop stitch and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. See all these bars? They're nice and easy to see in stockinette. I need to pick up one stitch for each of those bars because it's dropped down that many rows. Here's my live stitch down here. So I'm just gonna kind of poke it onto the needle. It's not on there perfect. So I'm gonna fix that now. I'm gonna get it so it's not like split. There we go. So I've got it onto my right hand needle and it is, let me see if I can turn this off. Maybe that's better. I've got the stitch on my right hand needle and it is open. It's not how it would normally be. It's open because I'm going to kind of treat this like it's a crochet hook. Um, that's how I like to pick up stitches here. So I'm going to kind of treat this like a crochet hook and we are going to pick up starting at the bottom most ladder, grab that, and then kind of like a bind off because I don't have a hook on my right hand needle, I'm going to use my left needle to lift up over off. And then I will repeat that, come down and get the next ladder, left needle like a bind off, up over off, next one, up over off, last one, up over off. And then I will check the back just to make sure I didn't miss anything. It looks good. And I'll put this stitch back onto my left hand needle and turn it around though, because it was the wrong way. And that's it. Fix my drop stitch. I don't know when I did that, but I just noticed it. <laughs> so hopefully that's, that's a nice tip for you today if you're out and about and you don't have a crochet hook to pick things up. That always helps. Um, okay, hi from Moscow. 
We're in the middle of a heat wave, extremely hot, hard to hold wool. I know, it is hard when it's hot outside, for sure. Good morning, hope that everyone is enjoying their Friday. Hey Jolie, how are you? Um, good morning, Alizé, and good evening to Rita. You must be somewhere in Europe or elsewhere. Um, good morning from Louisiana. It's really hot here and muggy. Yeah, it's definitely humid here in New York City today. I um, had to go to a couple of miles away today to get a like pre-travel uh, COVID test. You just have to like prove that you don't have COVID. And so um, I was like, I walked to the bus stop and then got on the bus and then walked to the hospital where I got the test and then, you know, did the same thing back and I'm like, ooh, it's not even hot temperature wise because it was still early in the morning, but it was sticky. I forget what it's like to be somewhere with humidity. Like Dallas is not very humid, so. Not that Texas is not humid. There are parts of Texas that are real humid, like Houston. Ugh. Um, these knitters are amazing. I'm so proud of myself for getting one sock done. Some of these fo folks and you, Natalie, are cranking out so many socks. Yes, you should be proud of yourself for getting one sock done. That's why I like this week because it's like you can create a personal challenge for yourself. So whatever is a personal challenge for you and then celebrate that. Celebrate what you achieved. It's 27 in England. That's pretty warm, yeah. Um, I freak when I drop a slip stitch on a heel flap. Oh, okay. So if you drop a slip stitch, you're going to do the same thing, except you're only going to pick up every other ladder. That's it. You just skip every other one. Yep. Because that's just kind of like, this one you skip is like when you slipped that row or that stitch. Yeah. So you can totally do that. Um, good morning. I'm taking my knitting on the road this morning. Where are you going, Ashley? That's awesome. Good morning from California. Good morning. Um, it's early in California, 7 a.m. Um, great trick. I'm always equipped with a crochet hook. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Hey, Rowan. Hey, Kelly. Good morning. Glad you got that all taken care of. I had a drop stitch on the heel flap the other day. It was so interesting to try and fix. Yeah, you had a drop stitch on, on the outer edge and that is very challenging to fix. Very challenging indeed. Um, let's see, a lady from Nitty City was trying to explain this technique to me, but I couldn't picture it. Seems so much easier than I thought. Good, good. Um, yay, I made it. I couldn't tell if it was live on YouTube or Instagram. Oh, I should have made that clearer. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're going to be um, live on YouTube twice today because later in the afternoon at 4 o'clock Eastern time, I'm going to be showing how to finish up a toe-up sock. So I'm going to show the cuff. To this morning, I'm going to finish a cuff down sock. So I'm going to show the toe or at least part of it because I was, as I was saying in the beginning, I didn't get as far as I wanted to <laughs> on my sock. So I'm not exactly at the toe yet, but that doesn't mean I can't demonstrate all of the lovely techniques. And I'm going to show today too, how to do kitchener stitch, um, without a tapestry needle. And I'll show it with a tapestry needle too, which means I need to grab one. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> I guess as we get further on in the week, I'm like, wait, I should have prepared that and had that sitting right here by me so I don't have to get up. But you know what? That's why these live videos are fun because they are just casual and I can get up and show you around and have Toaster here with me. He's decided not to sleep in his bed, I guess. Toaster's gonna go get a bath later today. I'm gonna clean his bed so he'll be all fresh when he goes to stay with um, his sitter next week when we go to Jamaica. Uh, Sam says, hey Natalie, finally remember to join a live. Yay, I'm from the UK, super hot here today. Happy Friday evening to you. Well, not quite evening yet, it's still afternoon, isn't it? Happy almost Friday evening. Almost the weekend for real for you. Um, good morning from Virginia. Heading out to St. George, Utah to visit boyfriend's family for the first time in a year and a half. Yay. Hi, Sharon. Just finished knitting a shawl. Uh, started to try dishcloths. Good. That's awesome. Good morning, Antoinette. Hi from Ireland. Hello. Hello. Um, good morning from Colorado. Cast on sock four this morning. Wow. You finish one sock halfway through a second sock. That is just amazing. 
Um, so what was everyone's goal? Because I mean, we're not like done yet. I mean, we still have a solid three days left, especially because the last two days are weekend days, which is very nice. Um, although sometimes for me, I might get more knitting done during the week than on the weekend, just depending on what kind of activities we're doing. Because <laughs> if I have stuff like meetings or videos to watch, I knit while I'm working. But if I have, you know, all this different stuff out and about when it's hot, I'm not always knitting, so it just depends. Some, sometimes weekends are better, most of the time I would say, but sometimes they're not. Um, She's going to have so much fun next week and we will be lonely. <laughs> I'm going to try to record a vlog um, as I'm like packing and then like as we travel and get there. Um, so just depending on how we're feeling like we might get there and just say, you know what, computer's closed for the week. Or we might get there and say, hey, we'll spend an hour a day getting this vlog up. So you never know. I might have a video next week. If not, I'll, I'll have it for when I get back. But yeah, it's going to be like a big week of, of all this live stuff, and then next week will be a little quieter. No podcast next week, for sure. But then we'll have one coming back. Um, let's see. Good morning from Florida. Finishing up the HFG on your toe up sock. HFG. What is that? Why am I not... I'm not connecting that right now. <gasps> Melissa, it's the start of your vacation. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Working on sock number two. Happy vacation day. Your fur baby say hi to Toaster. He says hi back, I promise. <laughs> um, let's see. Off topic, but I want to knit a simple raglan pullover. Ow. Pullover using fingering weight yarn. I'm not great at reading patterns yet. What simple pattern would you recommend? Um, so I have heard amazing things about a sweater called the Flax Light. The light version is the fingering weight version. It, I, ooh, it might even be a free pattern. Why not? Let's look at it. Um, but yeah, Flax Light by Tin Can Knits. I've heard wonderful, wonderful things from lots of people who knit it um, as their first sweater um, and have continued to knit sweaters since then, which makes me think that they weren't turned off by knitting sweaters from this pattern. Yeah, Flax Light, Fingering Weight, free download. Um, part of the Simple Collection. It comes in lots of sizes, which is just beautiful. Is it Raglan though? Let me see. It is. You said Raglan, right? Flax light here. I'll send it into the into the thing. I'm I'm hoping that there's lots of comments coming in. Maybe some suggestions are coming in. Oh wait, I don't know that was it. Okay. Um, back to where I was. Yeah, and if anyone else has a good um, first sweater pattern suggestion, please leave it in here. Okay, morning from Denver. Finished my fish, fish lips kiss class sock last night and I love it. Cast on the second. Can't wait to make a bunch more. This heel fits me way better. Jessica, that is so good to hear. I'm glad you like knitting it and even more that it fit because that's important too. Um, my goal was only two socks, but we watched quite a bit of TV and my crochet club got canceled, so I'm trying a third. That's great. Yeah, so if we're five days in and you've done two socks, then you have a really good chance of finishing another in the next three days, so that's great. Um, I'm working on the foot. I'm a, about halfway to the toe. Perfect. Um, during meetings at work is the best for me. I managed to get so, much, so many projects done while working from home. I agree because when you do need to just sit and you can't go, you know, you're supposed to like be on camera, looking at the camera for the meeting, but you don't need to be like presenting, writing, whatever. It's the perfect knitting time. <laughs> I got a lot of knitting done too while we were doing work from home. Um, so during meetings, meetings were my, became my favorite thing because I could knit. And I definitely didn't knit during meetings 
at the school because especially if like a parent was in there I just didn't think that that was for me like didn't seem to be professional but on zoom when you can't see my hands and it's just my coworkers. like they know I knit they don't care it was great um all right where was I good morning from LA I used to live in New York City and I love getting to peek out your window oh yay I um it's amazing I have all the shades down right now because it is um really hot really sunny and it kind of like the the two windows that are right here by my computer I usually have to keep them down until later in the evening this time of year um because it's so bright I like I have to squint and if I'm squinting all day, it gives me a headache. <laughs> so I like keep them down so that I can see my computer screen and everything and to help the temperature, keep the temperature down. We um, only have sheer shades and they're pretty light. And so I have sent out to a company, the company that put these in to see how much it would cost to get blackout shades. I mean, we're renters, so it really can't be, you know, if we were living here for a long time, it would probably, you know, we'd be willing to spend a little more money on putting things into this apartment, but it's gonna have to be a pretty, pretty affordable for us <laughs> to actually put them in, but I really want it to be so. Cross all your fingers that the estimate comes back um, as something that's worth it as, as short-term renters. Because it would be really nice to like drop down darker shades um, when we need to, <laughs> when I need to block the lights and just use my other stuff, so. Um, I'm trying, I'm just trying to finish my very first sock, almost done with the leg. That's wonderful. That's amazing, you're doing your first sock. That's so great. Um, my goal was one, my extra goal was the pair. I'm starting the heel flop this morning on the second day, maybe the second pair, and I've also got to cast on a test knit. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes if you have other obligations, that makes it a little hard. Um, Stacy said, I cast on the shark fin socks two at a time, but my knitting time has been lacking this week and I'm behind now. Well, if you, well, one, I would say just have fun. No pressure. Um, if you don't finish your socks, it's totally okay. The finishing the socks is just the challenge. Finishing the socks is to enter for prizes. But if you're just joining the making make along and having a good time, that's good too. Um, but if you really want to get one done, I guess you could take one off and just work on the one, and that would help. Um, but if you have second sock syndrome, that might not help. <laughs> There's some thoughts on that one. Um, oh, HFG heel flap and gusset. Yeah, that makes sense. I just couldn't like. I couldn't like put that together for some reason. I was like, what's the HFG? <laughs> you made it. Hey, Wendy. Um, my goal is two socks. One sock is done and I'm on the gusset decrease of the second sock. I think I'll have two done by the end. That's awesome. I'm working on my first cuff down with an afterthought heel and re regretting it because I don't know how long my foot should be. Um, Deanna, do you have another pair of finished socks that you can go grab? Um, if so, you can count the um, or at least get a really good estimate of the rows or the length at least of those socks and use that to help you. So what you could do, I have this sock right here. Let's see. I think, I, did I put those away? Where are my socks? Oh, I podcasted yesterday. So then like everything got moved that I was keeping out. Hold on, let me grab it. Okay, so here's my suggestion, Deanna, for your afterthought heel. If you have a, a sock with a short row heel, like, because that will be similar to the afterthought heel, you could probably count the rows. So you could come and see, like, it would be a little hard, I mean, actually it wouldn't be too hard, to find, like, where your first row of your foot was, you know, kind of come from the the hinge line of the sock. If you have a, con a sock with a contrast color heel, that would be really great because then you'd know exactly where your first row is. So you could find your first row, maybe put in a light bulb stitch marker, and then you can count all the way to your toe decreases or increases, whichever way you did. And then you'll know like exactly how many, how many rounds or how many rounds to do. Or you could measure 
your foot length, right? And then subtract like one and a half to two inches and that's how you'll know. Or I guess you could just measure like, if I measure toe to heel, I usually do about, what's that? I usually do like six and three quarters to seven inches for me. So my total foot length is nine inches. And um, I think, I'm pretty sure it's nine inches. And so I subtract two and I knit with my toe and foot seven inches. That's how I figured mine out. And so you could do that. That's how you'll know where to put in the afterthought heel. Does that help? Hopefully. Um, let's see. You love the Love and Stitches t-shirt. Looks comfy. This one is comfy. This is the like women's v-neck. Um, and it is like a little, like as with any women's tops, it's a little on the smaller side. Like this is a medium, but I kind of feel like it fits like a small. Um, so it's, you know, snugger for me on, on my hips, fits really good up here. And it has this like, um, almost like a drop shoulder sleeve type of deal. So, and it's really soft and comfortable cause it's the, the premium fabric instead of just like the t-shirt cotton, which I, I really like. I find that that's, those are the shirts I grab way more than just like my t-shirt cotton shirts, which are fine too. But I, um, all of my sock week shirts are in the wash and I need to do some laundry. <laughs> so I wore all of them. And so, um, oh, you know what? I got Kent a t-shirt, a fish lips, or fish lips kiss. <gasps> wow, my brain. I got Kent a shark week t-shirt and um, it's a sock week t-shirt. I really can't talk. I got him a sock week t-shirt and I guess I could wear that if I needed to, <laughs> but maybe he'll wear it. Who knows? I just thought it would be fun to get it for him. You know, like a small under $20 present <laughs> for my husband, you know. So, okay, let me try to catch him on comments here. I got way behind, sorry. Hey, Nancy, you're at work. Thanks for joining us. Just cast on a sock this morning, taking a break from work uh, to work on the cuff during this live. Great. There is a beginner sweater on YouTube. Okay, I'm gonna need more details on that. I saw on your Instagram the other day, you were knitting at a baseball game. Was it an MLB game by any chance? Do you know if knitting needles are allowed in the stadiums? It was, it wasn't a major league baseball game. It was at the, it was the Mets and what is their stadium called or arena or whatever it's called. Oh, I don't remember. I know a city field, I think city field. Yeah, so we were at city field and um, yes, knitting needles are allowed. They should not be a problem. Um, what I'll do a lot of times at sporting events, just to like, they are allowed, but just remember that anywhere, um, airport, anywhere there's security, airport, Disney, whatever, even if you, what you have is allowed, it is still to the discretion of that professional. So just have that in the back of your mind so that you're not like, it's rare, but just have that in the back of your mind so that you're not disappointed because that has happened to me at Disney and I was very disappointed. So what I'll do is I'll either put these into a, um, like the fabric needle case, or I'll do this. I'll stick them down into my yarn. So it's very clearly like knitting, right? And it's not like, what are these sharp objects? Um, but it's not, it's not a problem. They just look through your bag you know, meet the bag regulations first and then just to throw your knitting in there. <laughs> um, okay. My son-in-law, my daughter and son-in-law have gone to Jamaica a few times and the Wi-Fi was pretty weak. She tried to FaceTime with me because I was babysitting and the connection was horrible. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see. That's why I can't like guarantee anything. Um, the last time we were in Jamaica, we were at a different resort anyway, so it wouldn't be that helpful. But, um, we were on our honeymoon, so we were like really, really good about like putting away our phones and we just were really concentrating on just being there and being present. And what's funny is I feel like I don't remember very much about it. Like I, it was kind of a blur. Um, so I am excited to go back to Jamaica and have a very like low key, no expectations, relaxed kind of a time, no excursions, you know, obviously my husband and I have been married for four years now. So like being around each other is a different thing. Like we don't feel 
the pressure to have to talk to each other the whole time. Like, I'm going to bring knitting. He's going to bring his computer, play some video games. We're going to watch watch some TV. Like, we're just going to chill. It's going to be so fun. Um, Dragon's were... Dragonhorde Yarn is coming out with a series of simple sweaters. She is. I'm not sure if they're fingering weight, though. That's the only thing. Um, Flax Light was what I was going to suggest. Perfect. Okay. Hello from Canada. Gave up trying to complete one sock in a week. Maybe next year. Three pairs going on for summer sock camp. Yay! That's okay. You don't have to complete the sock in the week. It's fine. Just hang out and knit with us. It's a good time. Um, okay. Perfect. Let me go. I'm way, way, way behind. Um, does the fish lips kiss heel fit similarly to an afterthought heel? It does. It has like, I want to say it has a little less room. Um, like it's not as, um, it's a little more streamlined looking to me. Like whereas the afterthought heel might give a little more room because you can do some extra rounds. Like if you need a deeper heel, afterthought might be better because what you can do is pick up your stitches and knit a few rounds first and then start your decreases to make the heel cup. And in Fish Lips Kiss Heel, you can do kind of something similar, but it's, it's not exactly the same. Um, but for me, because I knit them both with like the same number of stitches down to the same number of stitches, they fit the same. I haven't really noticed like a difference between my afterthought heel and my fish lips kiss heel. Um, morning. Hey, Melinda, working on my shorty sock top down heel flap and gusset onto the foot now, but your yarn is going to run out. So it will be a scrappy sock. That's a good solution. Um, just cast on my second sock a little behind with my aim, but a migraine yesterday. I just lost it. Threw you off. I know. Bummer. I hope you're feeling better today. Good morning from Michigan. Raining here. Going to finish my sock today. That's awesome. I'm so excited. Just ordered my Love & Stitches Fade set. Yay! I'm so excited. My um, Love & Stitches members have access to uh, Moon Glow Yarn Company fade set today, um, but everyone else, don't worry, it's coming on the 27th. You will be able to order your Love & Stitches fade set, which is a uh, fade set of pinks. I'll just show you because I have it right here. It's a mini skein set, but these are half skeins, so they're all 50 grams seven colors and it's all in a fade they're all just slightly different i mean this one's obviously different this is like 11 stitches pink here and then it's got the whole fade set let me see if i can put them in order um so we were uh, as my members uh were talking last night we were brainstorming different patterns you could do with this because what I, i'll tell you what i'm planning to do in just a second but um you could definitely just get the kit and make a make a pretty decent sized project because with seven minis, as I do a terrible job holding them up, seven minis is three and a half skeins of yarn, of fingering weight. So for some people that's enough to do like a short sleeve sweater. Um, you could do a rather large shawl. Um, I think it's like 1400 yards. Um, but for me, I'm gonna use these colors as the stripes in my long summer cardigan and pair it with this like light gray beige color, grayish color called Aspen. And it's gonna be beautiful. So I've got four of the main because it's a long cardigan. And Whitney has this listed like where you can get it, you can get just the fade kit um, or you can get the fade kit plus Aspen. And she's even got, if you wanna make the long summer cardigan with me, which I would love for you to do because I'm so excited about it. She's got like each size listed in there. so. My members have access to it now, but um, I will be posting about it a lot more when it's publicly available in just under two weeks, because Tuesday the 27th is just under two weeks away. So, very excited. I'm so glad you got that, Karen. Um, all right, Carmen, I got so much done with my toe up sock on the leg now while watching Little House on the Prairie. Oh, I love it. Flax was your first sweater, that's awesome. On your toe decrease. My goal was three socks and I'm almost done with a third. Um, I just remembered about the live and I made it, yay. I have one with a heel flap and gusset. Would that work? 
Deanna, that should give you a pretty good estimate, but I would, instead of counting rows, I would just measure the total length and subtract two. And that will give you a really good spot for where to put in your afterthought heel. So measure your length, subtract two. Um, what baby blanket is light, not heavy to travel with, an easy pattern? I do not know the answer to that. Hopefully we have some people answering. I haven't knit a baby blanket in a very long time. Um, I'm doing my socks toe up and I got my first heel done and working on the second. These are my first pair ever. Woohoo! Yay, Wendy! Um, <laughs> I'm staying up late. Oh, I just lost it. I am, I am pretty far behind. No, no, I'm not too far behind actually. I'm staying up late to work on the foot. <laughs> Maybe work will be light today and I'll be able to sneak in some rows. Yeah, hopefully so. Um, how do I do the fish lips kiss heel? Um, so the fish lips kiss heel is a paid for pattern, but it's only $1 and you can get it on Ravelry. Um, Maybe Etsy too, um, but it's a great heel. It's a short row heel and it involves a short row technique called twin stitches and all of that information is in the pattern. Um, I'm doing my first cuff down sock. Ribbing is going slow. Yeah, I like getting past the ribbing, <laughs> to be honest. I don't mind the ribbing, but I like getting past it. Um, we'll watch this later. Camping at the moment, finishing up my third sock for the week. How fun. Um, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. I only missed one live this week here in Ireland. That's impressive. Happy sock week all. Thank you so much. Um, I crocheted during a Yankee Yankees Red Sox game a few years ago. It was a baby blanket and it helped keep me warm. <laughs> Very nice. Um, hello from Germany, finally live. I tried, tried all week, but it didn't happen. Hey, Nicole, I'm so glad you're here. Um, Melissa said, mine, meaning her knitting needles, were questioned in my carry-on. The tech was new and they had never seen someone bring knitting needles. They thought it was a needle. The other TSA agent used it as training experience. Yeah, I held, had only one problem in the airport and it was with these same needles, the sock needles. And it was because I had them in a fabric um, needle minder. So they were put together like this. So they looked kind of like, they looked thick and long and sharp. And the rule on um, like blades is I think three inches and under or under three inches. So like you can have a pair of scissors um, that as long as the blades are under three inches. Um, and so it looked like to them scissors that were longer than three inches. And so they were like, what is this? And then they looked at it and they were like, oh, no problem, it's fine. Also had the same problem bringing home a Disney Halloween countdown calendar because it was the castle and they're the, the like turrets looked like a blade or something so you know you never know what it is but yeah just smile and show them your knitting needles and it should be fine <laughs> hopefully um hello oh wait i already read that one um hi natalie twisting stitcher here in michigan stopping in to say hi i did the kitchen kitchener on my toe last night and i'm posting pictures in the FO thread today. My husband and I celebrated 20 years yesterday. That's wonderful, Margaret. Congratulations. Um, doo -doo -doo. I'm all, almost to putting waist yarn in the foot of the sock for the heel, then onward to the leg. Yay, that's awesome. You're like a proud parent of your fade set. <laughs> I know, I was so excited. Like it was an idea in my head and Somebody brought it to life. It's the coolest thing. Um, doing my first ever toe up pair, have 20 rounds on the leg and cuff to finish my sock week sock. The other one already had a toe before, so it does not qualify, but I made it mostly watching your lives. Oh, that's so cool. Um, taking cues from the shadow wrap, if you do less twin stitches on either side, it will give you a deeper heel cuff. Oh, really? I thought it was more, actually. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I thought I thought if you did more, because you'd have more rows to be deeper. Hmm. Um, hi from California. Almost finishing my first sock. 
I can't wait to see your cardigan. It's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it's going to be so good. Um, I got so into watching again. I forgot to switch my contrast heel color. Darn it. Tinking back two rows. Not enough coffee. I know. Same here. I need to finish my coffee. Um, finished one sock halfway through another. At first, I wasn't going to do sock week because my due date was yesterday, but this baby doesn't seem to be in a hurry <laughs> to make an appearance, so I'm thankful to be make, making socks as a distraction. Oh, Samantha, I don't know that personally, but I have just heard that it's rough waiting, so I'm glad the socks are keeping you calm, and soon your baby will be here, and you won't even hopefully remember that part. <laughs> the waiting, it won't seem as long. Um, so an afterthought heel is not just a heel you put in after knitting the tube. It's a specific pattern. That's a question. Um, not really. It is just a heel you put in after. Yeah. I've got a video on how to do the afterthought heel with waist yarn. And do I have another one? I might have two afterthought heel videos because you can also cut into your sock and just take out a row and that's where your opening comes from. All right, I promise we're gonna dive into the toe in just a second because I'm not there yet, but I'm a lot further than I was when we started this. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, gonna miss these live streams. It's a good opportunity to knit along with other people. I know, it's so fun, isn't it? This is what we do um, on Zoom, not on YouTube, like every single day in the membership. We've got Zooms going every day, it's so much fun. Um, finally made it, YouTube isn't notifying me, darn it. It's 8.30 here in Costa Rica on my second sock. Don't worry, we're gonna be on at least another half hour today. Um, only 20 minutes of work left and I can knit, knit, knit. Yay, Rachel, happy weekend. Um, scissor rules vary by country. I was able to take a cute little pair of swan handled scissors to Japan, but they didn't make it home. Good point. If you're traveling domestically in the States, that, should, that rule should apply. I mean, look up the TSA guidelines, but if you're traveling out of the country, you're going to have to be careful because sometimes going there is different than coming back, for sure. I'll have to see with Jamaica. I mean, I don't anticipate a problem, but there could be. I'll be sad. I'll be sad if I don't have knitting. Um, I'll go take a look at the Afterthought tutorial you're the best. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. So kind of you. All right, let's like knit the toe of a sock, huh? Should we? Shall we? Again, I'm not quite exactly where I need to be yet, but that's all right. That's okay. We'll still show the technique. We'll still do the Kitchener stitch. We'll do it all. Okay, so I have been knitting, and I know I'm not showing anything yet. I just realized I'm not on the right side that I need to be on. Let me switch. Okay, <clears throat> I think this is okay. I might need to turn my light on, but we'll try this for now. All right, I am just knitting happily on my cuff down sock that we started on Monday. We started here at the cuff. I showed how to do the super stretchy cast on, so if you haven't seen that yet, go back and watch the live video from Monday, or you can take a look through my series, which is much more concise, but we did a stretchy, like easy stretchy, um, cast on, which is just casting on over two needles. Hold on. Bright. Um, and then we did 20 rounds of twisted one by one rib. Okay. Turned out really nicely. And then I went straight into knitting the leg. I did 40 rounds here for the leg. My marker marking 20 rounds is on the other side on accident. I need to move it over here. In this sock, I did a fish lips kiss heel, um, which is a short row heel. And I like to do mine nice and deep. That's why it's pretty pointy there at the end. Placed another marker for my foot, and that's what I'm working on now. So my uh, light bulb markers in here are counting. This is the last row of the heel, 20 rounds on the foot, 40 rounds on the foot, and now I'm working on the last bit. I usually do 65 rounds for my size US women's eight foot. I'm not there yet, but that's okay. We're still going to talk about how to do the toe. I'll get there today, probably. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it, and then later I'll take it out. <laughs> so what I need to do is I need to get back to the beginning of my round, and for me, the beginning of the round's the bottom of my foot, so I need to knit one more half round. So hang on, I'm gonna knit another half round so that I'm back to the beginning. I, I can also test that from my um, ends here, See, there's where my ends are. 
So this part of the sock is like the first half because this is the beginning of the round. So I'm not there yet, it's over here. So I need to knit one more half round. Um, I'm enjoying, so enjoying these lives. I need to join the membership next time it opens so I get more. Yeah, we're gonna open it again in August. So definitely look out for that. I have some bamboo needles that are kind of curved that I take on planes. If they toss them, the only thing I'm missing is knitting time. Yeah, because that's what I would do to you if they were like, you can't have your needles, I'd be like, all right, take the needles out. Hey, here you go. <laughs> I'm taking my knitting and my yarn. And I would be sad because I wouldn't have the knitting time, but at least I would have my, my investment. <laughs> the knitting and the expensive yarn needles, you know, they are not cheap, but I could replace them. Um, hi, Natalie. Through COVID, I've been teaching myself to knit and I'm doing okay. That's awesome. I'm a long time crocheter, so I'm familiar. All I want to do is knit socks. How long have you been knitting? Um, you should totally knit socks. Dive into it. It's so much fun. I have been knitting since I was 13 years old. That's when I learned with varying like intensity, you know, like not always as, as much as I do now. And so I am 29, so that's 16 years. I've been knitting for 16 years. And I learned to crochet a couple years later. I think when I was 16, so 13 years of crochet. 13 years of crochet and 16 years of knitting with um, varying intensity. <laughs> you could say the last couple years count for a lot more because I'm doing a lot more knitting. Um, I read a book about knitting recently. I believe it mentioned that there's only one yarn shop in Jamaica. I can't remember when the book was published, but maybe it's still there. Yeah, we're probably not even gonna go off the resort, to be honest. Like, I'm not planning to go to any yarn stores or any excursions, um, but I, I can't imagine that, that yarn and like needle, well, knitting in particular is super popular in Jamaica just because of the climate. Um, it being like a warm island all the time. Um, but I'm sure there are knitters there, you know, like, of course, there's knitters everywhere. There's knitters in hot parts of the US too. Um, you finally made it. Hey, Bobby. Question for everyone. The yarn I'm using on my current sock is a little thicker, an 80-20 base. I'm worried they may knit up wider. Do you decrease how many stitches you use, you cast on in this case? Yes, Sarah. I actually will decrease the number of stitches and sometimes go up in needle size. Um, so for example, Moon Glow Yarn Company, um, the yarn base is an 80-20, it's a little thicker. And so I went up to a size two needle. You can barely tell probably that this is a little thicker. I went up, this is a one. This is a two. I went up to a size two and I only have 48 stitches on this sock. We're gonna finish this one later today. Isn't it so fun? Um, and I, this 8020 is not quite as thick as other 8020s, so I'm, I think I'm gonna try next time to do a size one, but then maybe I'll do like 56 stitches instead of 60. So. You definitely have to play around with it with different bases. That's why most of the time I will use 7525 just because like I know my numbers, I don't have to think. <laughs> but yeah, definitely when it's thicker, it will change um, the fit of your sock if you don't change anything else. So I would, I would consider knocking off some stitches in uh, multiples of four. Um, Stacy says I use a pendant style cutter when I travel so I don't have to worry about scissors. Perfect. Um, how do you know when to start the toe? How do you know how much longer the sock will be with the toe? Don't know if I'm making sense. Anita, you're making perfect sense. So the toe is gonna be around one and a half inches. Um, so generally, you want to stop two inches short of your total foot length because we want some negative ease. If we made our sock exactly the length of our foot, it would be baggy. Um, so we build in some negative ease there. So. My toe today, we can, well, I won't finish it, but maybe I can measure it when I'm done. That'd be really interesting, right? To see how long it is. Um, so the toe might be about one and a half inches long, but you wanna stop about two inches from the end of your total foot length. So if my foot is nine inches long, I will probably want to knit the heel and uh, foot to seven inches. Did I not have a ruler over here? at some point in time, a measuring tape. 
I thought, oh. I'm not there yet. So here's the end of my heel into the toe. I know y'all can't see that. I'm at about six inches right now. And I have one, two, three. I have, um, I'm at 12, eight, five. I've got 13 more rounds to go. So that should get me pretty close to that like seven or so inches, okay? So again, my total foot length is nine inches. I subtract two and that's where I get seven. So I'm kind of aiming for around seven inches here. Total foot length minus two, that will help. And again, that's just a starting point. I just wanna stress that like sometimes you will knit socks and they won't be perfect. So you just gotta, you gotta mix a few socks and tweak it and stuff and just see. All right, let's start a toe. Again, I'm not exactly where I need to be, but that's okay. So I am gonna be making the toe with the contrast yarn, this uh, light gray, so good. This was the Suburban Stitcher beneath the surface set. I didn't use a yarn cozy and look what a mess I have. I should have just put them in there. <laughs> um, but I did use one here, so it's actually staying together nicely. All right, so I'm gonna do a contrast toe and I'm gonna dive right into doing my decreases for the toe. So the kind of toe that I like to do is a square toe, at least right now. I mean, I might change my mind later, who knows? Um, but I like to do a square toe. It's super straightforward. You do the same thing every other round till you get to about half your stitch count. Um, and it's, yeah, it's really easy. So I have 60 total stitches. Half of my stitch count is 30, but I will tell you that that is not possible to decrease down to 30. Well, it is, but not the way we're gonna decrease because we're gonna decrease in multiples of four. And so I can either go to 32 or 28 stitches total. So I like to decrease down to 28 stitches total for my toe. So every other round, this is what I am going to do. Let's add in our new yarn. This will be really great because then I'll know exactly where to come and take it back out. All right, I'm gonna add in my new yarn. Whenever I add in a contrast color, I like to twist my um, colors. So what I'll do is I'll take, here's the new color, here's the old color, right? I will take the new color underneath the old color. So old color, new color is gonna come underneath, right? So that it like traps it. And that just kind of helps with gaps. When I go to weave this in, I'll, I'll pull on it and everything too. So I do that on the, on the second stitch, all right? So, oops, I forgot to do the decrease though. Okay, so we've knit one. Our next stitch is gonna be a slip, slip, knit. I like to slip both stitches knit-wise. So slip one knit-wise, slip one knit-wise, put your left needle into the front of both of those stitches, and then knit them together, okay? And then we're gonna to knit to the last three stitches on this needle, knitting across, so yeah, we're doing four decreases every decrease round, and then in between that, we're just doing a plain knit round. That's how I like to do my toe. And if you do an afterthought heel, after you pick up your stitches, you'll do the same thing. The um, proportions are a little different. You're gonna decrease a little further. Instead of decreasing down to half of your stitches, you'll decrease down to about a third of your stitches. There's some insider secrets for you. <laughs> Doing some maths, doing some maths. All right, almost there. Last three stitches is what we're going for. Notice that I'm not knitting over my end here because this is the bottom of my foot and I don't like ends on the bottom of my foot. If it was on the top, I would be knitting over my end. Three stitches remain. On this side, we're going to do a knit two together so that our decreases slant in towards the sock. Knit two together and a knit one. All right, so our needle looked like knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit to the last three stitches, knit two together, knit one. Repeat on the other side. All right. Do, do, do. I've heard people who carry a, whoops, I lost it. Lost it. I've heard people who carry, who travel, carry a self-addressed envelope 
if TSA veto is something you can stick it in the mail so you don't lose it. I'd be sad to lose my needles. Yeah, I, I've heard of that too, but then where do you go? Like, you get back out of the security line and go mail that to yourself? Like, I gotta go, I gotta get on my flight. <laughs> so I've heard of that too, but I don't, I don't understand all the logistics of it. Um, Aaron said, I do not switch the amount of stitches or change the needle size and I've never had an issue. If anything, your sock may be more dense, which may be wear better. Yeah, it totally depends. Like if it's a super, super thick 80-20 base, even not changing anything, it will like, just because the stitches it's themselves are taking up more space, your sock will be bigger. But that might not always be the case, like um, Aaron was saying. Okay. So when I get to the last three stitches, I'm going to knit two together, knit one. That's my decrease round. Whoops. Knit one. All right. I always tighten that. And I would have cut this if I wasn't actually, if I was actually done. But yeah, tighten things up there a little bit just so it doesn't bother you. So on the next round, on all the alternating rounds, you are just going to knit. Just knit. Knit around and around. So one decrease round, one knit round. And you do that until you're at half of your total stitch count. Again, it's in multiples of four. So with some stitch counts, you'll have to choose. Do I want to go a little above halfway or a little below halfway? Because 60 stitches um, down to 30, that doesn't work when you're decreasing multiples of four. So got to go to 32 or 28. And I choose 28. And when I'm counting my stitches, I almost never count the whole round. Instead, I'm like, okay, if I'm aiming for 28 stitches, that's 14 on each needle, right? And I'll just count the needle to see if I'm getting close. I don't count the rounds, I just count the needles, or I count the stitches on the needle to see um, if I am on track or not. All right, I think I'm just gonna show this one more time because I wanna show you how to recognize your, your decreases and increases. Um, and then I'm gonna show you the Kitchener part because again, this is not actually where I'm at in the sock and I'm gonna have to take all this out. So I don't wanna do too much on it. Silly me. Ooh, it's getting hot in here. Um, I wish I had like a thermometer to know actually what the temperature was in here. It's probably not that hot, but it feels really hot. All right, what did I miss? I love watching, or I just, I love, where did I get that from? <laughs> Laura said, I, wa I just watched your knitting and walking reel on Instagram. I'd love to know where you got your backpack. It's so cute. Yeah, my backpack is from, um, oh shoot. <laughs> I know exactly where it's from, but why can I not think of it right now? Give me a second. Where's my backpack from? It's a purse. It's a nice, a nice brand. Uh, Rebecca Minkoff. It's Rebecca Minkoff. <laughs> it's, it's a leather backpack, and I and it's something that I wouldn't have gotten if we didn't live here in the city because it's just so great for when you're gone for a long time. I can fit a water bottle, a knitting project, and then just my regular purse things in there, and then not have it be so heavy. Or if we're stopping and doing an errand and I need my hands free, like it's just really nice to have that backpack style and I have absolutely loved it. It's been worth every penny. It's the perfect size, the perfect weight. It's great. Okay, so let's look here. I know that I need to do a decrease round next because I can identify this little sloping stitch right here as a decrease. And right above that, I have just a regular V knit stitch, which means I've done a knit round. So I should only have one V knit stitch above to know that I've done a knit round. So that means I need to decrease next, okay? And then I'll show you what it looks like with a decrease. So that decrease round again is just knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit to the last three stitches of needle one, knit two together, knit one. And then you repeat on the other half of the sock. So let's look at what a decrease looks like. Because when you see the decrease right up, right up next to your needle, you know you need to do a knit round. Whoop. 
Okay. Can you see that right there up against the needle? That overlap of stitches right there on the second stitch. If I see that when I come around, I know I just need to do a knit round. I just need a knit right on top of it. So I'm gonna work this decrease round and then one more knit round because before we Kitchener, we want to have a plain old knit round. So you'll decrease down to half of your stitches, half of your total stitch count, do one more knit round, and then you're finally ready to Kitchener the toe. Um, I just learned about a new toe, new to me toe the other day called the umbrella toe. And you have, instead of having decreases in on the sides, you do them, I think like evenly around. I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen it in some patterns. And so now I'm kind of curious about that. I'm also very curious about knitting an anatomical toe. So here, if I take a look closer, I see that I just have a plain stitch on top of that decrease, which means I need to decrease. This is how I get away without having to track. I just look at my stitches, I read my knitting, and then I count. I know I'm aiming to get down to 28 total stitches or 14 on each needle, because that's half. So I just read my knitting. And if you just started knitting and you're like, that's really hard for me to do, it is. It's really hard when you're new at knitting um, or crochet, whichever one you're learning right now. So don't worry too much about it. Just try to like start observing that more, be intentional about it. And I promise you, it's kind of like, well, you don't remember probably, but when you were learning to read, when you first saw the alphabet, it just looked like sticks and curves. <laughs> but eventually those sticks and curves started to mean something to you. <laughs> And that's the same thing with knitting. It just looks like lines and whatever. Stitches might not even really look like stitches until you start to think about it. It just looks like fabric. And then as you start to pay attention to it and learn what things are called and how things move around, those actually become something to you. All right, I'm gonna work a knit round and then we will do some Kitchener stitches. Kitchener, who loves to do Kitchener? Who hates to do Kitchener? <laughs> I love Kitchener Stitch. Um, okay. Good morning from California. Um, which do you find is the best fitting heel style? You look more relaxed. I'm assuming you're retired from teaching. Oh, I don't, I am not a teacher anymore. That's right. I am full time YouTube, full time knitting, full time this and that. It's amazing. I love it. But I have to say thank you to my teaching years because it definitely helps me do stuff like this. <laughs> um, let's see, I'm part of that hot part of the US. When I moved from Northern Nevada back to my hometown in Southern Nevada, I felt weird with wool, but I learned adding lace makes things cooler. Is it Nevada or Nevada? What do the locals say? I always say it wrong. Kent says I always say it wrong. I'm like, well, I grew up in the East. I don't know what, what it is. <laughs> I usually keep the same needle size but decrease four stitches when I use 80-20 versus 75-25. That's perfect. I'm going to try that, um, Whitney, with my neck socks with your kit because I'm going to have plenty of yarn left over. And I think I'm going to like that better because your base is like in between other, like in between 75-25 and other 80-20s that I've used, if that makes sense. So it's like a medium thickness which I think might just be perfect to keep my same needle size but like you said lose a few stitches and it's like hey it's gonna look great it's gonna feel great and it's gonna be four stitches fewer per round which is gonna go faster <laughs> so I think that would be great oh Jean says she's currently using an 80 20 size 1 56 stitches perfect um, I bought a pair of child scissors with a round tip and it's never been questioned. I've traveled in the US and to several countries in Europe. Wonderful. About how many grams of fingering weight does it take to do the toe of a sock? I'm most likely going to, or I'm going to be playing yarn chicken. Um, I'd say it only takes about like three or less grams, um, but I, um, like I'm able to get a sock with heels, toes, and cuffs out of a 20 gram mini and have some left over. And I know I've weighed the heel before, and for me it's like between three and four grams, and the toe uses less than that, so I'd say somewhere between two to three grams. It's not a ton. 
It's not a ton. Okay. Let me catch up real quick and then we'll do the Kitchener stitch. All right. You don't mind Kitchener, that's good. Um, let's see. How do you join the membership? It will open, yeah, it will open on August 1st, from the 1st to the 3rd. This month we only had it open for two days because we had all the, the sock week stuff coming out <laughs> and we had our event really early. So we had it only the first and the second, but yeah, check back August 1st and I'll be opening the membership. Um, you finally tink back, now you can start the heel again. Hi Sarah, um, just coming in to knit a bit on the toe, nearly done, yay. I make these stitch markers that are double sided, they have a knit on one side and a D on the other. That way I don't have to pay attention to where I am. Jen, that's great, so you have, your knit side, or your knit row, and your decreased row. That's great. Uh, I knit the anatomical toe. The bearded pearl has a tutorial. That's what I've been hearing, and I really want to try that. Um, umbrella toe is my absolute favorite. So easy and a much better fit for me. Perfect. I think I'm going to try tweaking my toe and my heel <laughs> because I've learned or heard so many good things about the shadow wrap heel, which is um, another short row heel, and so I know I will like that aspect of it. So I'm gonna have to try some new techniques. I like Kitchener once I figured out the pattern. I love Kitchener, but I also enjoy hand sewing. Never done the Kitchener. Don't love it, don't hate it. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You were, oh, Bonnie said, I was just eyeing Whitney's yarns and I want all of them, Moon Glow Yarn Company. Gonna have to make some decisions so I don't go completely broke. <laughs> you know, don't do that. <laughs> Get some for today, save some for later. Um, we say, no, wait, we say with the ad part said like ad Nevada. Okay. That's not how I want to naturally say it. So Nevada. Um, Justin from the Beard, Beard of Pearl has a great anatomical toe tutorial. Yay. I'm using leftovers from a 28 gram mini to do the toe and part of the cuff of my sock week sock. So I think I'll be cutting it close, but I have about five grams left. Oh yeah. 28 grams is, oh, part of it though. Okay, I was like, 28 grams will be a ton of yarn, but I see. Good morning, Carol. All right, let me grab a tapestry needle, and we are going to Kitchener two ways. We're going to do the traditional way with a tapestry needle, and then we're going to do with just the knitting needles, which is great if you're out and about. Let's say you're out and about. This happens to me all the time. And you finish one sock, you need a Kitchener, and you have like way more time somewhere. So like you need your needles free to cast on the second sock, but what can you do? You're stuck, right? Not anymore. You can Kitchener without a tapestry needle. Hi, handsome. Oh wait, where are my needles? They're over here. I'm back. <sighs> okay. So, to Kitchener, we are going to cut our yarn. Um, the rule of thumb is like four times the length. Um, so you definitely don't want to be Kitchenering over like a long, a long bit. But I'm not going to cut four times the length because I'm not going to Kitchener all the way across my pretend sock. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut a little bit. Uh, usually, I would say. I don't need much. What do, what do we think this is? Maybe 12 inches? That's probably about what I, what I need because I will have a lot fewer stitches. All right, traditionally, oh, here's another tip for, for everybody. If you have long nails or just a hard time threading needles, get yourself a needle threader. I've got some of these linked in my Amazon shop, but unfortunately they only come in packs of like 1 million but they're cheap and sometimes they break. So it's kind of good to have backups. Maybe you can split with a friend. Where are you needle? Um, but I often have a hard time with the, with my nails being like the dip manicure being a little thicker. I have a hard time threading. So rather than fight it, especially when I have to thread a lot of ends, I will use a needle threader. Okay. So the way you do the needle threader is you put it through 
the eye of the needle first. There's like wire right here. I know it's really hard to see. There's wire right here. You stick it through the eye of the needle and then you're able to put your yarn through the wire, which has a much bigger eye. So I just pop that through there, pull it through. And then you pull this through the eye of the needle. I like to hang on to the wire itself so that I'm not like yanking it out of this plastic piece. So I will literally like hold on to the wire. I know this is hard to see. And pull it through and then your needle's threaded. So I, I, keep, I keep my threader here in my little pouch. All right, let's see. I don't mind Kitchener for socks. I had to seam, once had to seam a sideways knit sweater and Kitchener shutter. <laughs> yeah, and that's such a pain because while the Kitchener technique may not be so bad, it's having a length of yarn that long to pull through that's really frustrating and it kind of gets messed up, right? Sammy, hold up, Kitchener with no tapestry needle? That's news to me, I'm so excited to see. Yeah, I learned this last year and because I said the same thing, I'm like, man, I don't have my tapestry needle, I can't finish it. And somebody was like, actually, <laughs> you can. Kitchener with no needle sounds scary. It's not, I promise, I'll show you. Hey from Denmark, um, they make yarn embroidery threaders, needle threaders that are stronger than these wire ones. Oh, that's great, I didn't know that. Love Kitchener, I'm excited to learn without a tapestry needle. So many toes and heels, so little time. <laughs> All right, so let's do the traditional way first, which is with a tapestry needle. Um, just remember that my, my yarn is still connected here because I'm not actually at the toe of my sock. <laughs> Nor did I complete a toe. <laughs> if you're like, that doesn't look like a toe, it's not. We only did a couple rounds. We're just getting the techniques here today. All right, so you'll wanna slide your stitches up onto uh, the two needles like so just so they're right up next to each other here, friends. This is going to be in our way, isn't it? Maybe I'll just kind of lay it over here. You will kind of be in the way. Okay, that's better. We're not gonna go all the way across anyway. So we have a front needle right here, the one that's close to our chest, okay? Front needle, back needle, the one that's further away from us. And the way we're gonna work this is we have this little mantra in our head that goes like this, knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. Knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on. It alternates, okay? So we started our front needle and we're going to knit off, purl on. I don't do the setup. I just skip it. No setup here. Take our tapestry needle, go into our first stitch like we're knitting, slide it off, knit off, and pull it through. Not tight, but not loose. Okay, now we purl on. So just like you're thinking, we're gonna go into the next stitch like we're purling and leave it on. Okay, front needle complete. Now we go to the back. And what I like to do is I'll scooch that needle I'm not working out and then push the one that I am working, you know, push the stitches closer to the tip of the needle. All right, so now we're on the back needle. Just make sure your yarn doesn't wrap around the stitch or you'll or wrap around the needle or you'll get extra stitches. <laughs> now we're on the back needle. Our, opposite, our mantra is the opposite because we're gonna start by purling off, okay? So we're gonna purl off, go in like a purl, slide it off, pull it through, and then we're gonna uh, knit on so go into this like a knit stitch and leave it on okay and that's it now you may be wondering how can you memorize this um, so we're always going back and forth between our front and back needle we're always going to work take a stitch off and prepare a stitch by leaving it on so off on off on but when we're on the front needle and we're looking at the knit side, it's knit off. We start with knit, knit off, purl on. When we're on the back needle, we're looking at the purl side. And that's my clue. Oh, this needle starts with purl. Purl off, knit on. 
And that's what helps me remember. It's always off than on, but which, one, which way do you start? You look at your stitches. So here I am in the front. I'm gonna do, I'm looking at knit. So I'm knit off, purl on, right? So I go in like a knit, go in like a knit, slide it off. Almost lost the back stitch there. Pull it through, then go in like a purl to leave it on. Opposites, opposites. Always off than on. Now we're going to the back, off than on. I know to start with purl because I'm looking at pearls. Purl off and then knit on. Okay, I've got one last tip for you and then we'll move to the to not using the um, tapestry needle. Always pull even but not tight. The reason the stitch is loose is because there's a loose end there that I need to pull on the inside. <laughs> okay, so here's a little, uh, one more tip to kind of make things a little more fluid. Um, instead of working each stitch on the needle like separately, we can do them in one fluid motion. We can knit off, purl on, then pull our yarn through instead of like doing the stitch off, pulling it through, putting the stitch on, pulling it through. That's a lot of messing around. So instead, what I like to do, I'm on my, I'm on my front needle, I'm looking at the knit side, I'm gonna knit off, then purl on. I'll go in like a knit, slide the stitch off. Before pulling through, I will right away go to the next stitch like a purl and leave it on, okay? Then, one time only, I have to pull my yarn through. This will cut your time in half. <laughs> and also, I think it helps not to like lose stitches because you're just, it's just more fluid, okay? Now we're on the back needle, we're looking at purls, so we're purl off, knit on. So, same thing, go into the stitch, purl off, before you pull through, go to the next stitch, knit on, and then pull everything through, okay? It's starting to kitchener there, a nice seamless look. So, so cool, perfect for the end of the sock. Um, all right, you might have already seen that, but if you haven't, that's what kitchener stitch or grafting is. <laughs> um, tuck the ball inside your sock, it's too big. I'll mess it up too much, but that's a good idea. Um, it's more fun to leave all the stitches near the end of the needles, keeps the adrenaline up. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Jen, that's like knitting in a roller coaster. Y'all are funny. Okay, ready to have your mind blown? <laughs> let's not use this, boop, and let's Kitchener without a tapestry needle. You're out and about, you can't thread your needle, whatever it is, whatever reason you have, you just wanna try something new. It's time to Kitchener without a tapestry needle. This is not as fast, I will say that. Um, so I only do it when I have to. I'm not like, if I have my needle, I'm gonna use my needle, if that makes sense. But I do end up doing this often because I'm out and about. <laughs> and so this really, really helps. Um, so, it's essentially the same thing, but we're going to use our knitting needles to guide this end through our stitches. And because of that, we're actually going to do the opposite of the tapestry needle. So instead of knit off, purl on, in the front needle, we're going to purl off, knit on. In the back needle, we're gonna knit off, purl on. It's the opposite. So now, <laughs> if you just learned Kitchener and you got the other part in grain, stop listening, because this is gonna be a little confusing. Um, but if you're familiar with it, go with me here. Um, when you're Kitchenering without a, cable, without a tapestry needle, you're gonna do the opposite of what you see. You see knit, you're gonna start with purl. You see purl, you're gonna start with knit, okay? so. Sorry, let me go back to where I was. All right, you've got all your stitches up here on both needles, and we're gonna work the front needle first. So we need to pull our back needle out, like we're gonna do magic loop, basically. And we're starting here in the front. Where's my end? Um, starting here with the front needle. We're gonna do the opposite of what we see. That's how we're gonna start. So instead of starting with 
knit, we see knit, so we're gonna start with purl, go into your stitch, I need the yarn, where's my yarn? Um, go into your stitch like a purl, hold on, sorry. <laughs> like, where does the yarn need to be? It needs to be over the top of your needle so it's out of the way. Um, go into the stitch like a purl, purl it. Oh wait, this all feels funny, sorry. Now we got it, my yarn's in the front because I'm purling, come on Natalie. Okay, so purl it, you pull the yarn through, okay? Just like I, I'm, I literally just did a purl stitch. This is a purl off, so take the stitch all the way off and then just keep pulling this end through all the way. Boop, it's gone. <laughs> purl off, okay? Now in the next stitch, we're going to knit on. It's still opposites, so go in like a knit, grab your yarn wherever it is, don't wrap it around like I did, knit it, and then we're not sliding off this time because it's a knit on. Pull the yarn through, okay? First needle, front needle's done. Now we're gonna rearrange to go to do the back needle, so slide your back needle back on and then pull your front needle out, okay? We're looking at the purl side, but we're gonna start with the opposite. So we're gonna start with knit off. So go into this next stitch like a knit, knit your stitch, it's a knit off. So slide it off, get off of there, and then just keep pulling it through all the way till the end goes through, okay? Yeah, that was right. I'm like, wait, <laughs> knit off. <laughs> and now we're gonna purl on. So go in like a purl and purl it. Don't slide it off this time, it's a purl on and just pull all the way through, okay? No tapestry needle. Okay, that's the last one. All right, let's go back. I'm gonna show it again and then I'll tell you why this works, um, why it's the opposite, okay? because I like to know why. <laughs> All right, let's do it again. So we're not using a tapestry needle, so we're gonna work the opposite of what we see. I see knits, so I'm gonna purl off. This yarn has to come underneath, okay? <laughs> this yarn has to come underneath your needle to get to the front. That part's confusing to me for whatever reason. So purl it, slide it off, it's an off, purl off, and then just keep pulling it all the way through. Next one's a knit on go into it like a knit, wrap, don't slide it off, it's an on, pull it all the way through, okay? It's slower because you have to do this, you have to rearrange your needles, right? So I did the front needle, now I'm sliding back to the back needle, pulling this out to use it. I'm looking at pearls, so I'm gonna do the opposite, go in like a knit, it's a knit off, so knit it, slide it off, and then continue to just use your needle to pull the end all the way through. And then purl on, Go in like a purl, actually purl it, but don't slide it off. Pull the end all the way through, okay? Um, that's such a smart way to memorize it, I never thought of that. Somebody taught me that too. I really don't remember. It was probably on a live or something. Um, you're unable to talk on your tablet, had to go to the computer. You have a suggestion for anyone that has a problem threading a needle. Tell us. Um, Kitchener without a tapestry needle. Undoing all that is not gonna be fun. You know what, I'm just gonna trash this yarn, I think, because it's so little, so it'll be fine. I'll probably, I'll probably go back and pick up this row. I'll show you that too, if you want. <laughs> hey from Poland, this is amazingly creative. Oh, thank you. What is this wizardry you're doing? I've never seen this, but I love the option. Lisa, it's so great when you're out and about, because then you don't have to like, wait till you get home to finish and cast on your second sock. I'm so happy you're going to tell us why because my mind is blown. <laughs> okay, so let me tell you why this works. Um, so imagine, well, you don't have to imagine, I'll just show you. <laughs> you don't have to imagine when we've got the tools right here. So again, if you've just learned this technique today, like don't stress about this not 
making sense to you. It doesn't, when you first learn something, I feel like just, you know, just do it. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense, just do it and practice it. And then eventually you can kind of get into like the why behind it. So when I use my tapestry needle, I gotta thread it again. When I use my tapestry needle to do a knit off, my yarn is coming from the left and it is going through from the left to the right, right? It's coming in like this. That's how my yarn goes through, right? Now watch what happens when I do a purl. So that was like going through with my tapestry needle like a knit. But we know that we do the opposite when we don't use a tapestry needle, we purl because watch my yarn and the direction it goes through the stitch. Tapestry needle, it went left to right. When I purl, watch the way my yarn goes through the stitch. It comes from the left to the right. Same direction, okay? So that's why we do the opposite because it pulls the yarn through the same direction as the tapestry needle. <laughs> so purl off, knit on. Yeah, yeah, when I first learned this, I was like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be wrong. I'm gonna have a purl bump on the outside. And then knit off. I, 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 will tell, I will say I'm getting faster at doing this because I've done it a few times. When I first did it, it was so slow. Purl on. Okay, I just wanted to finish the set so I wouldn't be confused. <laughs> Always finish the set before you pause. Um, but yeah. Still Kitchener. I, I, I probably did, what, three or so stitches with tapestry needle? Three or so without? Almost like magic. <laughs> oh! Kat says, I'm using the same technique, but I use a really small crochet hook. Brilliant. You could also do that. Yes. Um, okay, here's the tip for threading your needle. Something that's free, typically everyone has paper available. Cut a piece of paper uh, slightly smaller than the needle eye, fold the paper over the yarn, and push the folded part through. You know, I used to do this, and I, I felt like a paper that's a little bit thicker, not thick, not like cardstock, but post-it notes. I used to cut off the corner of post-it notes and I would keep several of them in my pouch because after a while, you know, they get bent and it doesn't help anymore. And I would do that. It's That's such a great tip, something you don't have to go out and buy. You can do that right now, get some paper or a post-it note paper. Um, index might be too thick, cardstock might be too thick, but yeah, that's a great idea. Um, that is awesome. Thanks for explaining. That makes a lot of sense. I have, I always have to understand too. Yeah. And same thing for the bat. Like if you want to play with the, you know, when you purl a stitch, it comes through the direction of knitting through, like pulling the tapestry through, needle through knit wise. Yeah. So it's so cool. Um, even though I'm not yet a sock knitter on the go, it's a very nice technique. Yeah, it's just great to have like in your back pocket, <laughs> ready for when you need it, for sure. Well, those are the techniques for today. I, I really hope that, you know, this whole week has been helpful. We do have one more. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to be live again at 4 o'clock, and we are going to finish my other sock. So what I'm gonna do, actually I'll show you how I take this out too. Why not, you're here? Why not? I'm gonna finish this sock with you live later because this was a toe up sock with Moon Glow Yarn Company and I'm gonna show you my super stretchy bind off technique that I love to use. It's not mine. I just don't know where I got it from. <laughs> I'm gonna show you that and um, we'll chat and that'll be our last live event until Sunday. Okay, so let's take this out because what I need to do now is get it knit up really fast and I need to weigh my yarn and see how much, how many grams it takes for a toe because somebody was asking that. And I need to get a picture for the tutorial <laughs> with its actual toe on it. So 
let's take this out. So what I'm gonna do, because I need to still keep knitting on my foot, <laughs> I need to go back to here. So I'm just gonna slide my needles out. Um, well, I think I'll do, where is my yarn? My working yarn is over here. My working yarn is over here, so I want my needle tips over here, okay? Because that's where my working yarn is. So I think I will, yeah, let's just take them both out, whatever. I, sometimes I do one at a time, like I'll take out one. Yeah, yeah, let's do one at a time. Let me take this front needle out and I'm gonna pick my stitches back up really easy because I need to pick up the stitches that are blue and not gray. Like that's a, that's a much, much better defined for me. So I'm gonna go through and pick up the left leg. Oh no, actually I'm gonna go this way. I like going right to left better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up stitches. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna pick up stitches around like this and then I'm gonna flip and keep picking them up so that my needle tips end up where they need to be. So just, just it'll make sense. <laughs> okay, I like going right to left, although you can pick up left to right, because, because I'm right-handed, that doesn't feel comfortable. If you're left-handed, it will. All right, so I'm gonna look for the first stitch here. See how there's like a little gap right there? That's the side of my, my foot. So I'm always just gonna pick up the right leg of each stitch. Um, this one's a little tricky because it's a knit two together, so I'm just trying to see, yep, if I could get both of those stitches, and I did. Again, this is much easier for me because I have clearly two colors. So I'm just going along the blue and picking up the right leg. The reason you pick up the right leg is it will orient your stitches correctly on the needle. So let me just grab these guys. The tutorial you didn't know you're getting today. Yeah, this is so great if you have to frog several rounds. What I used to do and what I still do sometimes instead of this is I will, I will pull my needles out completely, frog to one stitch before, or one row before the row I actually need all my needles, and then one stitch at a time I will like Pull, pull the stitch, you know, pink, pull the working yarn so that that stitch pops out and then place it on my needle. Um, because sometimes this is hard, just depending on the pattern, but in stockinette, it's relatively easy. So yeah, I'm just placing the right hand leg of each stitch on here. If I have, um, if I'm doing this and it's all like one color, it's a little harder to stay on the same row. So sometimes I will have to go through the round and like fix it after the fact, but it doesn't, it, it's usually not too many stitches. Okay, here's a knit two together. Oh, the other one was a slip knit. Here's a knit two together. So I'm gonna try to get both stitches. So I'm gonna try to get the one down here and the one on top. And then I should have one more, right? Cause it was knit two together, knit one. Okay, so that should be my whole 30 stitches on this side. So then I'm gonna slide through and flip, okay? Slide it through. So now I need to do the one on this side. See how I left them on the needle? I just did that so they wouldn't like keep falling down. Now we can slide these guys off. And I need to keep going in the same direction, okay? So I'm gonna use this needle, work from right to left, and grab all of these guys. Same technique, same technique, nothing new. Nothing new. I don't know if I can get that one. It's the slip slip knit. If I can't grab it perfectly, sometimes I'll just split the stitch and I'll fix it as I, I look at this row. Okay, we're almost there. Like, as I'm like concentrating, I'm like, am I on camera? Am I even there? Cool. We are almost there. So after I pick all these up, what I definitely will do is um, count and double check and look at my stitches, look at the front, look at the back, just make sure everything is there, everything is good. Because yeah, it's easy to lose stitches. 
And if I lost one or picked it up on the wrong row, I just, I just fix it. That knit two together, that's easier to get. Last stitch of the row. Ah, okay. So now that everything is nice and on the needles, this is the fun part. Oh wait, hold on. Um, if you ever have to unpick Kitchener, it's not that great, is it? I like to use a tapestry needle to unpick it. Pick it out. Is that showing up? Okay. Oh, yo, yo. You will, you know, when you make mistakes, appreciate them. So you can learn something new. Just kidding. Well, kind of. Okay, I'm not being too fussy about this because, hello, we're gonna take it all out. I could just cut this, honestly. Oops, oops. I started pulling out a row instead of my end. Man, that takes away some of the fun. I love doing the frogging part. It's more fun to frog when everything is stable. Okay, I'm kind of getting into craziness over here, so give me one second. Need to get to where I'm done kitchenering. Almost there. Okay. All right, so this bit is fun. I like this bit. So my stitches are secure. They're already on the needles. So now I can just go pink, 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 and pull all of these stitches out without having to stress. Get out of the way, working yarn. So here we go. I can just go pink, 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 pink. I love the way it feels. Do 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 do. All the way around, and then. The coolest part, like, see, see, look, there's still one more row on there. Isn't that cool? So that's the fun, for me, that's the most fun to pull out. Uh, oh, this is getting so long. Let's just cut it. You're bothering me. Okay. We almost lost one. Oh, actually, I haven't picked up the very first stitch. Can you see it right there? I'm going to have to get that one. It's not on the needle. <laughs> That's okay. We'll get it. Okay, so here's, here's my favorite row. Watch this. And all of those are just nice and on the needle. Here we go again. Sound effects necessary. Okay, here's that last stitch. Let's grab it. <laughs> and then we're going to be done. So if you have any last questions, will you please uh, put them in the chat now so I can make sure to answer them. And like I said, I'll be back later today um, on the last, for the last live tutorial for our Toe Up sock. This was so fun. Okay. There's my last stitch there that I need to pick up. I left it in, I left it, let the gray in so I can kind of use it to pull because those end stitches are hard to get. There we go. So I can kind of pull up on it so I can really see that stitch. Gotcha. And just like that, the gray is gone. And I will for sure count, look at the back, check the sides, make sure I haven't dropped anything so that I am good to go. So I can actually finish my foot and make the toe. Oh, I love it. All right. Second heel done. Now time to go to work before the zoom at four. See you then. Um, another revolutionary technique I tried out recently, tinking multiple rows at once. Yes, you can even do that just like dive like one stitch at a time. Right leg. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, that helps so much. 
Love all these great tips and techniques. Thank you for sharing this with us. No problem. Late to the party, but I was at the gym. Good for you. First time to catch you live. Oh, yay, Patricia. I'm going to be back at 4 p.m. today, 4 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Natalie. I learned so much today. This was incredibly helpful. Good. I wondered how to pick up SSK stitches. Thanks for showing that part. You're welcome. One time I had to unpick an entire sweater bind off and tubular bind off. Oof. One sided Kitchener. If it, if it wasn't a sweater, I would have just tossed it. I understand. Um, I'm always so scared of frogging because of picking up. Yeah. We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. <laughs> Embrace your inner Bob Ross. Um, all the drop stitches is always so scary looking. Yeah. I like how you never rush through your tutorial. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Quick question. When measuring for the foot, do you include the heel in the length? Um, yes, like I measure my foot, right? So when I say my foot is nine inches, I literally mean the length of my foot from toe to heel is nine inches. And then I subtract to seven, and then that's when I measure, it works both ways. So measure like heel to the end of the foot, I wanna be seven inches, but if I did a toe up sock like I have here, I would measure I would measure toe to where I start the heel. This one is not a great example because I was messing around a lot with my stuff. So let's let's see. Yeah, this one's a little short. Oh, you can't even see that. Seven inches is like over here. I could have used a few more rows, um, but I didn't want to, I'd already knit the foot. <laughs> so I was kind of like not quite getting everything perfect on this one. But ideally, I would want seven inches, including seven inches on the foot, including either the toe or the heel. So two inches short of your total foot length. I hope that helps. Great sound effects. <laughs> um, I'm a combo knitter and had to learn my leading leg quick. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. I thought I knew how to knit docks, but you added some great hints. Oh, there's always more to learn, right? Um, what time is it now? Just so I know what time I have to pop back on for the evening live. Right now, it is about to be 12 p.m. Eastern time. About to be. It's 20 till 12. So whatever time it is for you now, add four hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> And I will be back at that time, four hours and 20 minutes from now. Yeah, and there's so much fun going on in between. I'm, it's going to be a fun day. This, this Friday is a great, great day. I'm going to do lots of knitting. <laughs> um, what rib did you do on that sock? I did a one-by-one one twisted rib. So I knit one through the back loop, purl one like normal knit one through the back loop, purl one. Takes a little longer for me, but it's a nice effect. Looks good. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you've been joining in, we're two hours ahead. Okay, so you're on mountain time, right? Or maybe you're in one of those states where it doesn't change. <laughs> yeah, two hours ahead. So for you, it'll be two o'clock. For me, it'll be four o'clock. Awesome. Thanks for showing that. I was second guessing myself. I was measuring correctly. You've given such great tips today. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you, Lisa. So nice of you to say. Yes, thank you everyone for coming this morning. And um, a lot of the stuff I talked about, I will have linked in the description box soon. Um, but I need, to, I need to go knit my toe so I can take a picture <laughs> of this tutorial. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you later at four o'clock if you can make it.